Media mogul Rupert Murdoch announced that he is stepping down as chairman of News Corp and Fox Corporation. The company says the 92-year-old Australian will wrap his career in November and will become chairman emeritus as his son Lachlan takes over the family business. Murdoch's son released a statement saying, quote, we thank him for his vision, his pioneering spirit, his steadfast determination and the enduring legacy he leaves to the companies he founded and countless people he has impacted. For more, let's bring in NPR media correspondent David Fulkenflick. He is also the author of the book Murdoch's World, World, The Last of the Old Media Empires. David, help us uh, and all the uninitiated really understand why this is such monumental news. What does Rupert Murdoch stepping down actually mean? You know, if you think of Rupert Murdoch, he was a guy who seven decades ago inherited from his father in what was considered relatively backwater Australian city of Adelaide, Adelaide, a single newspaper. And he built it up into an unrivaled global media empire, particularly in the English speaking world. But, you know, with a presence in Latin America and Asia as well uh, as Europe and, uh, and Australia, his native land. Uh, he owns, you know, these are publicly traded companies, but he is considered uh, technically to control 42 percent of the voting stock, which really means these are family concerns. And they own The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post. He founded Fox News in 1996, revolutionizing the nature of cable news, but also of television news to become a much more uh, polarizing, narrowly cast, uh, divisive in some ways, as it turned out, force, not merely uh, appealing to a different sensibility, but stoking and driving particular political points of views. And he used these outlets in the United Kingdom, in, in Australia, in the U.S., to achieve certain kinds of policy outcomes and particularly certain political results. Earning favors from politicians, he was able to trade in for business advantage, but also pushing certain kinds of uh, results that might not have occurred otherwise. Think of um, the invasion of Iraq in 2003, which he promoted through Fox News, through the New York Post and the Weekly Standard, uh, and, and gave ballast to George W. Bush, but also ballast to uh, Labour Party Prime Minister uh, Tony Blair over in the UK and similarly an Australian Prime Minister. Those turned out to be wildly unpopular uh, positions ultimately in all three countries. Uh, you know, his uh, tabloid, uh, The Sun, really promoted Brexit in England, which has been seen pretty widely as, as a disastrous outcome there. Uh, and here in the U.S., even though he privately disparaged then-President Donald Trump, he, as he testified earlier this year, allowed some of his key stars on Fox to embrace Trump's lies about the 2020 election in order to try to hold on to Trump's core voters, who were many of Fox News's core viewers, who were upset with the way in which Fox had more accurately on election night called certain states in favor of Joe Biden. So what you have here is a force that is complicated. I mean, he is incredibly correct in be able, being able to identify uh, significant portions of the audience of readers and viewers who felt they weren't being served by mainstream media. But you also have a guy who played upon those things, I think, to very divisive and corrosive effect. You saw in his, in his going away statement, which carried much grace and eloquence and appreciation of his colleagues, he also took aim at unnamed elites who he said were, you know, cut off from the rest of society and at the rest of the media, which he said largely was pandering to those elites and, you know, seeking to serve agendas that, that didn't serve the public. You know, in a sense, once more promoting the, the sense of grievance that helped propel the success of some of his populist tabloids. Very quickly, David, uh, how different is his son? Uh, we just have seconds. What can we expect? How different are they? Lachlan Murdoch, I think, is being set up by his father to succeed, and we'll see whether his uh, siblings uh, vote to keep him on after Murdoch totally leaves the scene. But, you know, right. Lachlan is at once a, a, a genial figure, but much less engaged emotionally uh, in, and much less ambitious than his father. It's hard to see how the empire could survive in quite the same way. All right, David Fulkenflick, thank you. You bet.